What's up traders? A lot of you guys are into cryptocurrencies and today I want to talk about Bitcoin dominance because there's two very popular big competing narratives going on right now and essentially both of them are bullish in the crypto space. The first one is that we're getting ready to have our next big bull run and that means that altcoins are going to outperform Bitcoin and so we should be loading up on altcoins because we're about to go into our next rip roar rally. The alternative one is from the Bitcoin maxis. Essentially, the whole Bitcoin is a digital gold argument and gold and Bitcoin are both doing well right now because people are afraid just in general. They're not sure about the role of the U.S. currency in global trade going forward after the United States abused its world reserve currency status, sanctioning countries like Russia and many others in the past. There's also a lot of fear about all the other fiat currencies and inflation, hyperinflation, a.k.a increase of the money supply going forward, devaluing the currency relative to goods. And honestly, I don't think either one of those is a terrible argument, but let's just make sure that they're actually accurate. And then of course, if we look outside of the crypto space, we also have a bunch of other narratives as well that don't involve crypto going up. But obviously, if you're listening to someone that's part of the crypto cult, there's only one direction crypto goes and it's going to be up, but I'm not so sure. But before we really get started and jump into the technicals here, just want to remind you this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. So there's some basic dynamics, and I think that as long as we accurately understand those basic dynamics, we should be able to figure out exactly what's happening or at least read the signs in real time so that even if we're wrong about what our prediction is, we can quickly switch and be right in the long run. So this is the weekly Bitcoin dominance chart. So obviously prior to there being altcoins or around the invention of the altcoins, Bitcoin was at 100%. So here on the chart, we see we we're basically like a flat line around like 95 or so. And then as we went into the first big altcoin bull run, uh, like the end of 2017, Bitcoin dominance just absolutely fell off a cliff as they were just creating nonstop new cryptocurrencies. They were able to essentially absorb the market cap. And we basically troughed out down here in 2018, January, which was when we had the peak in the altcoin bull market rally. And then during the bear market that followed, Bitcoin gained back quite a bit of that dominance and actually came up here closer to about 72% again. So it fell as low as 35% from almost 100% and then got back about 50% of that move came all the way back up to that 72%. And that was right around September 2019. And then the next bull market that came after that, again, we saw Bitcoin slowly losing value and we came down here and we put in actually a higher low. So what does that mean? We hit like the 39% level, but never got down as low as we were before. So it means if you took the value of all of the cryptocurrencies based on market cap, added them up and then divided Bitcoin out, you could see what the percentage of Bitcoin is and what the percentage of altcoins is. So the fact that we had substantially more altcoins down here in 2022, when we hit the trough, but they never captured as much of the total market cap as they did previously in 2018, tells us that even though there's more altcoins and more to choose from, the people aren't necessarily choosing them. As a matter of fact, we know for sure that less people based on dollars chose altcoins over Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has officially put in a higher low, at least for now. Now we can see very clearly that we're consolidating inside this range right here, the green area being support and the orange area being resistance. And I think that's the most important area for us to pay attention to. And that's what we're going to focus on now. We entered into this area in May of 2021. So now here we are in April of 2023, coming up on basically two years trading inside this range. And you guys know how I treat range trading, support or resistance is while we're inside of a range, we consistently buy support. So that would be buying the green line down here and we sell resistance, AKA selling the orange line here. And all we're doing is betting that if this range has been trading for two years and we've been trading inside of it, more likely than not, when we hit resistance, we're gonna get rejected. And when we hit support, we're gonna get rejected. And that would just be us continuing to trade within that range. So part of my strategy is based on range trading and that essentially the longer we spend inside a range, the more likely we are to continue trading inside that range. Therefore, I give a higher probability of a rejection when we get to the support or resistance substantially higher than an actual breakout. And we know that in this specific case, we banged up against the top here once, twice, three times, four times, 
five times. And now here we've banged up against it another like five times here, but we'll just count that as our sixth time. So six times in a row, we hit resistance. And every time so far, it's gotten rejected. And the same thing here with support, we have one, two, three, four, five. And every one of those five times, we later got rejected and then pushed all the way back up to the resistance. So most likely in my scenario, based on technicals and probabilities, uh, I think we'll get rejected here and come back down towards the bottom of the range once again. So what does that mean? It means Bitcoin is going to lose dominance compared to the altcoins. So if that is the case, one of two things can happen. We can have markets go up or we can have markets go down. So it's important we understand what's going to happen in those two scenarios. So let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that this is correct. So we're just going to assume that we'll sell resistance and buy support. So selling resistance in this case means that Bitcoin dominance has topped out at 48% and is likely to go lower. In this case, we have our support down here at 40%. So more likely than not, based on this strategy, we're going to lose about 8% of that Bitcoin dominance. So if that is the case, that means right now we want to be buying altcoins because the altcoins are going to be gaining dominance, which means that regardless of the direction of crypto, whether it goes up or whether it goes down, that the Bitcoin dominance is going to fall, which means that more of the percentage of money is going to altcoins than is going into Bitcoins, or less of the percentage of money is coming out of altcoins than is coming out of Bitcoin. So let's say, hypothetically speaking, we break down from here as we're expecting, and we see Bitcoin dominance falling. And let's say at the same time, we see the crypto space breaking out and going to the upside. It means that altcoins are going to outperform Bitcoin or go up more than Bitcoin is going up. Therefore, we want to be invested in altcoins because we'll see higher percentage gains. And then in the opposite scenario, hypothetically, let's say that we get rejected right here and go back down to 40%. But at the time, crypto is getting rejected and going lower. What that means is, is that less money again is flowing out of altcoins than is flowing out of Bitcoin. Or in this case, the market cap would be falling in Bitcoin and in altcoins. So the market cap is falling slower in altcoins than it is in Bitcoin. So that would mean that we're having an aggressive sell-off in Bitcoin, but it's less aggressive in altcoins. So now, hypothetically speaking, we can look at these two scenarios and say, well, it's very, very rare that we see the crypto market selling off and Bitcoin selling off more than altcoins. So that scenario has a lower probability of success than, let's say, for instance, we get rejected here as crypto is going higher, but altcoins are outperforming Bitcoin. And this is the main narrative that you're going to see in the space where everyone's saying they loaded up their bags, they bought their favorite altcoin or shitcoin or whatever you want to call it, and now they're ready for the next moonshot, the next crypto bull market, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And honestly, if we get rejected right here, that seems like the most probable scenario to me because very few times in the past have we had a sell-off in Bitcoin where the altcoins sold off less or Bitcoin dominance went down. More often than not, when Bitcoin dominance is going down, it's because altcoins are outperforming to the upside. So in this case, when we look at this and we say, okay, realistically speaking, there's a higher probability that we get rejected here at resistance than there is that we break through it. That means that typically when we have a breakout to the upside, altcoins are going to overperform Bitcoin. So that is the most likely scenario. We get rejected here. We come back down towards the bottom of the range. Altcoins continue to go up faster than Bitcoin. And that would explain everything. Now, the opposite scenario, of course, could happen, in which case we were breaking down. And for some reason, there was something wrong with Bitcoin. People didn't want it. Or maybe they're taking the opportunity to load up on altcoins if we got like a 10 or a 20 or 50 percent dump. And that's why everything is going down, including Bitcoin dominance meaning that more money is flowing into altcoins or less money is flowing out of them, which is of course possible, but substantially less likely based on historically what crypto has done. So now what about the other scenario, the one that no one seems to be taking into account, which is that Bitcoin actually breaks out of this range. Now, obviously we have touched the bottom and the top of the range, roughly like five times each. So the last 10 times we hit support or resistance, we got rejected. So the probability of this being the one time that we break out seems substantially less likely. That being said, we are seeing some signs that actually a breakout could be possible. And what that means is Bitcoin is about to gain Bitcoin dominance relative to altcoins, which means more likely than not, either Bitcoin is breaking out to the upside and altcoins are underperforming or 
Bitcoin is breaking down and altcoins are losing value relative to Bitcoin or market cap, which would be essentially the move to the upside right here. It would say that Bitcoin is probably going down and altcoins are probably going down faster. Or we break out from this range here and Bitcoin is going up, but it's going up substantially faster than altcoins. Therefore, it is gaining market cap in the crypto space. So that is also a possibility, but that entire possibility hinges on us breaking out of this trading range we've been in for two years for Bitcoin dominance. So let's talk about what it would look like if we were actually going to break out. Well, what we know is typically when we hit a support or a resistance, we get rejected and we get rejected quickly. Here's a perfect example of a clear rejection. We push up, we break out, and then before the week can close, we get rejected all the way back down here and we put in a clear rejection wick. Here we have a scenario where we have multiple candles building up to it and then we close out the weekly and then we immediately get a very bearish sell-off afterwards. So let's talk about this scenario right here. So we had a very aggressive move to the upside and then stopped that resistance, but we consolidated there one time, two time, tested to the bottom and rejected lower prices three times, four time, and then we pushed up aggressively and rejected higher prices. And now here we are afterwards Typically, when you see an aggressive rejection like this, you'll get some kind of follow through in that direction. We haven't seen it yet, and we have about seven hours left on this weekly candle. But the longer we consolidate at a resistance or a support, the more likely we are to break through it. So while typically I give strong favor to the channel or the range that we've traded in, when I see a consolidation like this at either a support or a resistance, I start to look at this as a very high probability that if we're going to break out, this could be the time. As a matter of fact, if we look at all the other times we tested resistance and support, we have never seen this many candles at one of those levels. It's almost always a very quick rejection and then maybe a retest followed by another rejection. In this case, we're just consolidating at that resistance. And that to me says there's a very high probability Bitcoin is getting ready to break to the upside relative to altcoins. And what does that mean? We're either breaking out to the upside and Bitcoin is overperforming or we're breaking back down to retest the lows and Bitcoin is holding its value substantially better. And that is the situation I think is most likely to happen, especially if we see the breakout. So let's turn on our indicator oscillators here and take a look. So we saw a strong trend began here based on the blue slope line of the TJD TD MACD. And that was throughout the range here we were trading in. It took us all the way to the top and it is still technically a strong bull trend. The 821 bull cross right here, we see maximum divergence between the 8 and 21 and we're consolidating at resistance. Again, a lot of signs telling us we're likely to have a break to the upside. We do see here we came out of the bearish control zone, got a hard buy signal, move all the way to the upside on the stochastics, and now we're inside the bullish control zone. And while we're starting to wane, we're seeing the blue stochastic coming back down. We're still above that 80 level. So even if these do cross and we get the hard sell, we would still be in the bullish control zone. So we want to wait until that falls down before we consider this a valid signal. So that being said, it does look like we're topping out right here, but we're consolidating at resistance and still have momentum in our favor. I would not rule out the possibility of a Bitcoin breakout to the upside and a push over the next couple of weeks. And that would likely, in my opinion, correspond with a sell off in the crypto space and probably us coming back down to retest the 25,000 level or potentially even 20,000 level. And then depending on how bearish it gets or if it gets bearish, potentially even retesting the lows or new lows. So I want to keep this one relatively short, but I thought it was very important that we actually talk about what's taking place right here. So there's four potential scenarios that I see without getting too involved. Two of those involve a crypto break out to the upside. Two of those involve a crypto breakdown to the downside. And then of course we have one of each of those scenarios in which Bitcoin does very well on a bullish breakout or very well on a bearish breakdown or vice versa. Alts do very well on a bullish breakout or very well on a bearish breakdown. So we have our four scenarios. If you're a bull on crypto in general, you're going to believe either Bitcoin's going to outperform to the upside or altcoins are going to outperform to the upside. If you're a bear on the economy or crypto or liquidity, like you should be, because obviously we're going through quantitative tightening, you would say that, well, we're probably going to break down and Bitcoin is either going to overperform or we're going to break down and alts are going to overperform. And we know in that scenario, very rarely, if ever in the past, have we seen a breakdown in price where the altcoins outperform Bitcoin or lose less value. So right now, what I'm looking at is 
My number one scenario is that we just continue to trade within the range and Bitcoin gives up a little bit more of the market cap as we come back down and alts overperform. Maybe that's as we just go sideways. But realistically, we're seeing signs that Bitcoin dominance is getting ready to break out to the upside. So while I give always a little bit of priority to just continuing to trade inside the range, we are definitely seeing some very clear signs here that Bitcoin is getting ready to break out of that dominance and take back some of the market cap from the altcoins. And could that be a retest of the recent highs or potentially even new highs up to like the 38K mark? Possibly. But more likely than not, a Bitcoin breakout on the Bitcoin dominance chart is going to be because Bitcoin is overperforming as we see a sell off. So that's it. I don't want to rule out any of those four scenarios. Obviously, if you're a bull on crypto, you can just rule the other two right out because obviously crypto is going straight to the moon. It's just a matter of whether you want to be in Bitcoins or shit coins. So that's it for today. Just want to take a quick look at Bitcoin dominance. It's always fun to kind of look at that, break it down and look at the hypothetical scenarios, build a case for one or build a case for the other, or in this case, all four, and then see what is the highest probability? What would make the most sense? Uh, you know, looking at it back in hindsight. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Bitcoin had topped out, started to sell off, gained market dominance relative to altcoins as basically Bitcoin sold off, but altcoins sold off substantially more or vice versa, like some of the other hypotheticals that we talked about as well. So please do keep in mind, this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile. So please do your own research and trade responsibly. Obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty going forward into the future in markets, the economy, and just in general. So yeah, we'll see how it plays out over the next few weeks or months. But it's always a good idea to look at both sides of the coin and be prepared. So that's it with our Bitcoin dominance chart for today. And obviously, I'm Crypto Trend Trader, and I'm out of here.